Stage separation. Please back burn start up. Oh I just saw that, that starship awesome. blew up. There it is. Unfortunately, Flight 8 had an ending much like Flight 7. SpaceX had a successful booster catch, but they lost the ship again. So how does this happen? Well, SpaceX initially posted during Starship's ascent burn, the vehicle experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly and contact was lost. Our team immediately began coordination with safety officials to implement pre-planned contingency responses and they're still reviewing that flight data to better understand the root cause. They write, as always, success comes from what we learn, and today's flight will offer additional lessons to improve Starship's reliability. But make no mistake, while it is amazingly impressive what SpaceX has been able to do with Starship, as well as catching the booster for a third time, they really needed this flight to work out. And having a very similar problem at the same stage of flight roughly, and not even being able to do the test that they were hoping to do on flight seven with the heat tiles and the different configurations, also with the payload deployment test of the Starlink simulators, it really, really is unfortunate. And check out this video from the control room. You can briefly see something happen on the computer screen and people were immediately trying to figure out what went wrong. As S.E. Robinson Jr. shares, it looks like a leak around the sea level raptors caused an explosion. If you look at the engine fallout order, a vacuum raptor exploded first, followed by all sea level raptors. In the first video, you can see how clean the first half is compared to the second half, major leak. And if you look at the second video, a replay on the SpaceX engineer's screen shows an obvious explosion, which you just saw. And other people noticed just before Flight 8 lost control, a burn through in one of the vacuum engines coming from the attic was also spotted. So we're still waiting from an official word on SpaceX, but their employees are taking it pretty hard. I mean, it's been a chaotic week trying to figure out when this thing would even launch and they've had some troubleshooting and some issues. And one of the SpaceX employees, Xander posted, flight eight hit me hard. Watching Starship fall after pouring everything we had into it cuts deep. It hurts because we care, because we know what's at stake, but pain is the price of progress. We'll carry this loss rise from it and push harder than ever onward. And John Edwards, who's the VP of Falcon launch vehicles at SpaceX, commented, never give up. After Falcon 1 Flight 3, we learned the hard way that the night is darkest just before dawn. Keep your head up, keep pushing, we're gonna get there. And so I wanted to draw your attention to this video that I showed in the beginning, captured by Jonathan Norcross. This is Starship 8's RUD over the Bahamas area. So another spectacular light show, but unfortunately one that we didn't want. Um, if you're a SpaceX fan, you really, really wanted this to go right. And you would also know that just simply having a successful booster catch is not enough to say that it went right. And before people get in the comments and say, well, this is a test flight. Why are you getting so, you know, upset about this, this will delay things. I'll remind you that the mishap investigation from flight seven is still actually open. And so this flight eight was able to launch due to a license modification. And so basically an exception so that they could have another test flight. So now having two mishap investigations and what seems to be a design flaw, not exactly sure when they're going to be launching next. Okay, Joe, so obviously SpaceX is still working out the details and we don't know exactly what happened, right. but I'm trying to not outdate this video. I wanna talk about what you think should happen next and what you think the next even few months could look like. Okay, well, I think uh, focus needs to be on the ship and the ship design, clearly. Uh, if you look at the difference between the uh, version one and now the version two ships, something has significantly changed in the design that has made it uh, more, a lot less reliable. There's definitely an engine uh, issue, engine section issue. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that it's a very similar issue, but uh, just looking at what we saw, it looks very similar. Um, I think that they need to do a full design review. I think, I think they need to basically stop flying, stop working on the current design of the Starship until they can nail down exactly what it is. Uh, I think once they do that and they kind of have a better design or a redesign, 
then I think they're going to need to go into a pretty substantial ground testing event uh, using their new capabilities at Massey's with the flame trench and the upgraded uh, uh, tanks and the ability to have longer duration static fires. I think they're going to need to do that. Um, I also think that it's going to be something that's going to rely, re require hardware changes, which means that the ships that are already in production at various stages, including the one that was getting ready for the next flight, uh, I think that they need to stop on production until they know what it is. And they may end up having to either rework considerably the tanks, the pipes, the interfaces with the engines, or maybe even scrap and start again. So I. This may be overly dramatic, it's just after it happened, it's just the top of my thoughts, but uh, I think this is a significant thing. It's not just a, we're going to you know, reprogram something or we're going to put a few vents in and everything's going right. to be great. I think this is much more than that. Right, and I, I think I want to hit on that significance because you and I are both major supporters and yeah. fans of SpaceX, but people need to understand that just because we had a successful booster catch and, you know, this... This ship, unfortunately, had a similar outcome to ship 33. This is not just, okay, try it again and, you know, it should be fine. I mean, it seems like there needs to be major change and and maybe a major delay. Right, I think so. And, and we were talking earlier, uh, they flew this one with a uh, FAA kind of exemption with the Flight 7 mishap investigation underway. It's still open. Right, so now they're going to have two, and I don't think that... Uh, you know, SpaceX can go back and say, well, I think we know what it is. We're going to fix it. Let's get another exemption. And I think rightfully so. I think the FAA would be very, very warranted in saying, hey, you guys are grounded until you can have some, you know, uh, really in-depth information and explanation of why and have a lot of assurances that it's going to be safe. And, uh, you know, public safety is a big deal. Uh, but I think as far as for the program, uh, it, it's a, it is a setback. Um, I don't think that we can sugarcoat that. Um, but I will also say that SpaceX has had to overcome a lot in the past um, through the development of the Falcon 1, through the Falcon 9, and right. now through the Starship, uh, the, the development of the Dragon capsules. Uh, they have a lot of really uh, great individuals uh, that are looking at different designs. They've overcome the challenges. I think they will this time, but uh, maybe it's time to slow down a little and go back to basics and let's figure out what is actually going on and it's going to take some time and I think they will be able to meet, ultimately be access, successful but uh, as far as some of their near-term plans maybe in the next couple of years I think this is a setback for that. Right and so are we really going to reach that ambitious 2026 Mars goal? I don't know. I mean, I, I see that as a very stretch goal in the anyway. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, earlier we were talking about how we're doing on the timeline. Um, I, I feels late already uh, before this, and with this, I just don't see them being able to develop not only a starship that's reliable enough that they can continue on, but there's other aspects of that too. Uh, On-orbit refilling, which would mean uh, refueling versions of the starships, those have to be good. Uh, they have to be able to show that they had to do that rapid reusability to be able to make it a viable option. Uh, and then they have to solve some of the other issues that they haven't had a chance to go through, and that is like heat shield development. That is probably one of the most significant uh, remaining uh, tasks to be able to show that the ship can be reused and used in the ways that they want. Uh, if they're going to you know, go back, go to Mars and re-enter, they need to have a heat shield. If they're going to be doing uh, uh, a lot of uh, propellant uh, launches, they need to be able to reuse those ships, and that means a heat shield. And with a flight like this today, um, they haven't even had a chance to find out if their heat shield development is on track. I saw some commentary on X, people saying that, you know, with the problems that Ship 34 and Booster 15 were having, this, this combo was already doomed. Do you think that um, this was just going to happen no matter what day we launched and if you believe that at all? Um, I think... It, it, I guess the, the nut of the question is, did they rush through the preparations to get it to launch today? And did they take unnecessary risks? Um, I'll leave that up to SpaceX to, to decide. I don't think so. I, if they had waited another week or two, would it have made a difference? If it's a design uh, no. flaw, it wouldn't. Right. I think, to me, based on what I see right now and my assessment, which we could find out I'm completely wrong, but it looks like it's a design issue, not exactly. a preparation issue. It seems that way to me too. And so, you know, it, it wouldn't have mattered if it was on Monday or today, 
this issue, whatever it turns out to be, mm. and hopefully we learn soon, um, you know, hopefully they're able to fix it. Right. Anything I, else? No, I just, I feel really bad for the SpaceX guys because they have, uh, you know, a lot of energetic people that are really focused on the mission, the future. Uh, they're excited about what they're doing. Um, and this is a challenge that's ahead of them. I, I think that they're gonna overcome it, but right now I, I can just, I just know that they're all, you know, just looking at what happened and just imagining, you know, what are they going to have to do to make this thing right? And, and uh, you know, it is, uh, it's kind of a, a sad day for them, but hopefully uh, you know, after some reflection, looking back at the design, they'll just get back up and, and they'll make this happen. And so this is just some preliminary information. We're still waiting for more details from SpaceX. And if they come out, I will give you a new video, but I wanted to get this out as soon as possible. And I've been waiting for more information, but it hasn't come yet. So let me know in the comments when you think the next flight will be. I think that we're gonna be delayed for a while, but I wanna know what you think. And thanks so much for watching my channel.